G'day there, podcaster. It is a spicy pod today. We did one that should have definitely been in the Forbidden Folder. We just did it as regular talkback. Um, we said costumes that didn't age well. Um, yeah, look, there's there's definitely some some spicy ones in there. Make sure you look out for that. Also, uh, Belle talks about Victoria's Secret, if you're into that. Talks about it for like a little while. Also, the love rat makes an appearance, and we talk about couples that are extreme opposites. Enjoy. Y'all ready for this? Here we go. Who's ready to have some fun? Ben, I am. Bell, you got to say you're ready for the fun, otherwise we won't know if you're ready or not. I can't hit the fun button until your energy levels increase. I'm ready. Here yeah. we go. This is Late Drive with Ben, Liam, and Bell. Oh, it's amazing. Nova. Thirteen, twenty-four, ten. Costumes that didn't age well. <laughs> this is after uh, there was a couple of AFL players who are now in hot water to the point where they've been suspended because they have dressed up at their footy party as Ray Gun from the Olympics, which what? is pretty soft. You know, utter woke nonsense. The world's gone mad. Yes, you've tuned into Triple M. <laughs> 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 but like, if you can't come as Ray Gun. What can you come at? Yeah. That is a big thing that happened this year, and you could feasibly say it was an ode to Ray Gunn. I support her. You yep. know what I mean? I've exactly. Heard, I've heard that there were some skits. Right. Like okay. There were some, but I think they were doing some. They were doing the dance. They were doing the dance. And even if you went to Mad Monday with the intention of doing a nice ode to Ray Gunn, after two beers, you would be doing the dance, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. you would, if you had the kid on, you would do the dance. Yep. Well, have you seen out of Melbourne today? There's the statue of Ray Gun that's been erected outside someone's house. Someone's given Ray Gun a statue? Yeah, they've like it's like pretty homemade, but there's a Ray Gun like mini statue on their front nature strip, and that's getting a lot of attention. So you could say the same thing, really. All yeah. right, we want to do 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz. Costumes that didn't age well. If you think back to the to the 2000s, to the 90s. Have you got a costume or do you know someone that wore a costume, perhaps to a costume party, and it just hasn't aged very well? If you give us a buzz, 13, 24, 10, we do have new triplets to give away. Uh, this is a good PSA as well with um, Halloween coming up, end of the month. It's just a good reminder, good refresher of what we should and shouldn't be dressing up Absolutely. as. Absolutely. Amanda in Sydney, what didn't age well? So my friend and I went trick-or-treating probably early 90s and we chose two quite early 90s iconic people in Michael Jackson and Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, a bit weird that one, isn't it? <laughs> and my a... friend was Macaulay Culkin and she walked around with like the little aftershave bottle with water in it and kept like putting it on her palms and slapping it on her face like, ah! Oh, yeah, from the, <laughs> yeah. From the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah. I'm just thinking about that weird relationship that they had. Yeah, it was weird. We don't bit. need to talk about it. Well, yeah, no, yeah, it's, yeah. Mm. Oh, look at it at the time. No, it probably was still weird at the time, actually. <laughs> uh, Nick in Sydney, uh, you've got a bit of costume regret, something that didn't age too well? Yeah, it was early 2000s. My brother and I are both over six foot, and we went to a uh, surf lifesaving club uh, fancy dress party, and we went as the Chinese lady swim team wearing bikinis, and, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Chinese mm-hmm. women's swim team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nick, uh, yeah. do you look back yeah. on that? Are you are you sorry that you did that? No, not really. It was a bit of fun at the time, but um, yeah, it's probably not appropriate yeah. to do now. Yeah, yeah. you just yeah. don't want the photos being shown around at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get you, Nick. Um, Paul, uh, tell us, this was your boss they had an inappropriate costume on. Yeah, a few years back at a throwback uh, Christmas party, um, one of my boss dressed up at P. Diddy. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, see, now, yeah, that's inappropriate. And there will be yeah. baby oil going around this Halloween. Yeah, of course. Mark my words. <laughs> and there's, you know, there's people that will think it's funny. Paul, at one of the Nova parties, um, this is when they were very much happening, uh, a colleague of ours came as the Australian bushfires. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, with twigs. and Remember the koalas? And it was just the whole nation. And she was like, yeah, I'm the bushfires. They had twigs in their hair and yeah. cellophane on it. Yeah, that one did not age well at all. Uh, Paul, because we love your story, going to give you one of those neutral bullets. Oh, beautiful. Thank you very much. No worries at all. We've got plenty more to give away tonight. So you can keep your stories coming through. 13, 24, 10. We want costumes that didn't age well. Jade in Melbourne, good evening. What costume did you go as? Uh, this was 2017. It didn't age well. No. I um, I got invited to a Mexican party and dressed up as a brick wall. Mm. Oh. 
Okay. Yeah. Is that right around the time yeah. like Trump was doing all the wall stuff? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. it would have been. Yeah, because he was 2016 election, so it was, it was after. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You can get, you know, taco suits and nacho. You could have done, mm. you could have done a fun thing that yep. didn't offend anyone. Yep. Why did I see them? Where is the line? Because if you go dressed in, like, like Mexican hats and stuff, like, where, mm. where is well, that Well, I think being then? a big enchilada is pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's fair game. You know, you, you, if you don't want to come as a wall. Yeah. Um, and look, some of these, these calls are bad. These have, these people are putting their own hand up and saying, yes, this wasn't great. Didn't age well. Uh, Jennifer in Melbourne, you wore a costume that didn't age well. My husband went as a priest and I went as a Yeah. <laughs> like, not sheer coincidence, was it? Like, you said, oh, you walked out and went, oh, look what we're dressed as. Like, you planned that. We planned it. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. so pretty, so yeah. You look back now and go, that was so... Stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. Uh, Nev in Sydney, a costume you wore that didn't age well. Oh, it didn't age well at all. I had a Jimmy Savile costume <laughs> with the cigar, the wig, yeah. the glasses, and the big badge. So yeah, that's a non-runner. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, he was yeah, and he was a bad, bad, bad human. And I, I one think of the worst in the world. One of the worst there ever was. Yeah, didn't age well at all. Uh, Maddie, uh, what about Hello. you? Uh, you've worn this costume. You're good at now. Okay, so it wasn't me, but it was my sister. Um, we had a silly Saturday event, and the theme was just come as whatever. And she decided to dress up as a Boston Marathon runner, the one that got bombed. <sighs> Um, and she went as far as getting wheeled into a wheelchair with the American flag wrapped around her, and she actually bought a large dog bone and hid that underneath as a <sighs> half her limb that had been blown off in that's, the event. That's awful. Well, Maddie, congratulations because your sister has won the most inappropriate, yeah, truly, truly costume awful. of the <laughs> night. And surely you're rolling into the party and people are just gasping at that. I mean, especially, I mean, the bone. I mean, was that? <laughs> like who's going? Oh yeah, hilarious costume! That's awesome. High five. That's uh, that's awful. That is very awful. That's a bad one, Maddie. But thanks for sharing. The Ben, Liam, and Bell podcast. Victoria's Secret show back today after six years. Bell, you're very excited about the whole thing. I am so happy it's back. Six year hiatus, but because now it's inclusive of everyone. Uh, ben and I couldn't care less, to be completely honest. But, you know, we feel like you have an equal share of the show, so you should be able to talk about it if you want. But uh, the way we're going to do this is we've got Australia's Got Talent buzzer style. So uh, Nathan and Sarah are on the line. Ben and I also have a buzzer. Um, if we get bored at any point, we're just going to hit this. Three strikes, you're out. Uh, Nathan and Sarah, did you guys want to test your buzzers? Buzz. Beep, beep. Cool. Interesting. All right. All right. Nice one. All right. <laughs> All right, Bill. whenever you're ready. So today at midday, our time. Didn't see that coming. I'm out. Of course you are. <laughs> well, you, you still got two more to go. You're fine. It was the first Victoria's Secret fashion show in six years. Why? This year it's been back because we've got plus size, trans and older age models all coming to walk the catwalk. We had models returning such as Gigi Hadid, Bella Hadid. Bye. Whoa! Screen Adriana. Adriana Lima was back. Oh my gosh, she's had kids. She's back after years. Kate Moss and her daughter Lily Moss both walked the runway. We also had time. Tyra Banks back for the first time in 20 years. She obviously looked stunning. We had all these models walking together alongside performances from Sher herself. Do you believe in love after love? And they're all walking out while Sher's performing. We had Tyler. Make me sweat, make me harder, make me we also had Lisa nah. from Blackpink. <laughs> That's it, Belle. You're done. She was like naming people that I don't know. <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, Sarah and Adelaide, you sounded like you were enjoying it, though. You didn't buzz. I was yelling beep beep for ages. My buzzer wasn't working. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, yeah, no, Sarah, you that weren't. Makes sense. No, you weren't. No, yeah, we must have had technical difficulties. I see. Okay. The boy who lived come to die. <laughs> I think I'll leave the impressions to Liam. 13, 24, 10, who can't you forgive and why? There's a post on Reddit that's getting a bit of traction at the moment. Um, this mum of a few kids, she has hired a babysitter uh, to look after her children while she's been out at work because her husband uh, unfortunately had passed away. 
And she's posted onto Reddit because she said uh, she's really contemplating getting rid of the babysitter at the moment after the babysitter had removed some love letters and love notes that her late husband had left around the house that she was preserving and keeping there. Mm. And so the babysitter went, she, she, it was an accident. She thought that the kids had been drawing on the mirror and drawing on the surfaces. So she wiped it off. Now the mum is like, well, I don't think I can ever forgive her. I have mm. to get rid of her. I can't even look her in the eye. Look, this feels like it's perfect for me, Belle, because I'm great at holding grudges. Yes, um, you are. And there's someone that I cannot forgive. Uh, and that's Liam after he slept in for one of the biggest job interviews <laughs> of our entire life. You just fully slept through. I rang you like 400 times and I had to do the job interview all by myself. But we got the job. <laughs> yeah, this, we we, we're doing the job. <laughs> we did. Because it's Ben. <laughs> well, it was many years after this, but yes, I did. I, I slept. Yeah, we were working at Triple J at the time and it was like the, uh, you know, we were having a meeting with Nova with all the big bosses. And I just had a bit of a sleep in and I, I missed it. The meeting was at 4 p.m. <laughs> and I, and I, I, I had a big night, a very big night. Um, but the thing is, they did call us back. It was two years after that, yep. but they still did. Uh, Jessica joins us now in Brizzy. Good evening. Who can't you forgive and why? Hey, guys. Uh, so it's actually my dad who can't forgive his sister. Um, so this is back in the 80s. He had this bottle of wine that he was saving for a special occasion and his sister was staying at his house for the week. So he went out to work and he came back and he found that his sister had drunk the entire <laughs> bottle of wine <laughs> and it has been decades and he still brings it up yeah. and it's a running family joke. That's fair. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's the thing. If it's like a Penfolds Grange and she was just she just thought it was some... Some berry estates, sort of mm. like goon. Ah, well, know. what, like you? Yeah, I've had a blunder. I've had a blunder. No need to get into Liam that. Liam once had a really expensive wine gifted to him and he poured it down the sink thinking it was off. Yeah. Because <laughs> there was crunchy bits down the bottom, but it yeah. turns out that's the thing that happens to old wine. <laughs> the tannins, I believe. Yeah. I'd never heard of that. All right, 13, 24, 10. Keep your calls coming through. Who can't you forgive and why? Uh, Jessica, because you're our first call for this, I'm going to give you a $50 GYG voucher. You. No worries at all. I love if you just tuned in to the snapshots your first time. You're like, God, that Liam guy sounds like a dickhead. Like, <laughs> yeah, I slept in. It was 4 p.m. I missed the interview. I got that expensive wine. I just poured it down the drain. Not I don't wrong. know. I don't know what's going on. 13, 24, 10. We got more GYG vouchers to give away to pay for your dinner tonight. Give us a buzz. Who can't you forgive and why? Jacob in Sydney has given us a buzz. Why can't your dad forgive his brother? Uh, he shot him in the face with an air rifle from point blank range when they were kids. Oh, that would hurt. As an accident, yeah? Yeah, as an accident. He's all good. Uh, my father got the slug taken out, had surgery, and he's got a few gold teeth now. But apart from that, he's all good. <sighs> gold teeth? So it like, was like right into his mouth? Yeah, like went in, in his jaw under his mouth and then ended up like around the side in his molars. <gasps> and yeah, he just, I don't know, they... Did surgery and took his slug out and just replaced all the teeth that were ruined with gold ones. It's surprising they let air rifles be legal for as long as they were. Mm. Like they only banned them a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah, and they were like like young kids, like less than 10 at the time. <laughs> See, that's the thing, Jacob. Like it, anyone listening with kids right now, I mean, you can just imagine the spray they got from their mum after that happened. No, they, back in those days, they probably went, ah, oh, boys will be boys. You know, <laughs> you know what brothers are like? Sometimes mm. they'll shoot each other in the face. I bet you can't keep a mewing streak for this whole podcast. Oi, stop gooning. The next bit's about to start. This Friday night, 8pm, put that as an alarm in your phone because we are doing this. The moustache is calling. Movember is back. Let's unite to take on men's health. Round up your mates and get involved. Sign up now at movember.com. saying Movember the whole time. It's a 24-hour marathon live stream. We are not going to be leaving the studio. I was struggling to get to bed last night, mm. just in anticipation of how this thing is going to go. Mm. I must admit, now we're getting closer, I think it's going to be very, very hard. <laughs> Don't yes. you think? Absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And also, I think at points... There may be like two or three people watching because we're going to be going through the whole night. 
I really hope that if you're listening right now, you just you tune in sporadically across the 24 hours. See maybe, what's happening. You know, watch at the start and then tune in a couple of hours later and then maybe come back in 12 hours and just see the natural uh, decline of our spirits. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, we are obviously doing it to raise money and start important conversations about men's mental health. Uh, Movember do some great work. Uh, we've got people to get um, some suggestions through on our Ben Lehman Bell Instagram as well for challenges because we're going to be doing a lot of things throughout the 24-hour live stream. Yeah, so we have 24 hours to fill. If you have a suggestion for something that we can do, whether it's a challenge or just an activity, uh, head to our Insta, at Ben Lehman Bell on Instagram. On our story, there's like a little suggestion box and you can pop it in there. Lehman Bell, I've been going through the suggestions and I've started to build the board. Did you want to run through some of these? Yeah, go on. All right, so these are real suggestions. Grace in Adelaide has said Belle should wax Ben and Liam while doing the live stream. Oh, absolutely, yes. James in Perth said you could play Giant Jenga. That'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, not as fun as a back sack and crack, but it's still pretty fun. (laughs) Chloe in Sydney has said we should untangle Christmas lights while saying Movember. That could be extremely frustrating. Jay on Instagram suggested drawing moustaches on Belle for an hour. Oh, yeah. So we I mean, what? cover her in moustaches. Oh. oh, right. I was going to say, I'm like, surely it wouldn't take that long to <laughs> draw a moustache. Uh, we got Stevie uh, suggested doing one hour non stop Borat. Right, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, that's fine. As in, like, so when you're saying, because we are saying Movember constantly, you just say it as Borat. Movember, isn't that? Isn't that? Isn't that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like a whole hour. I think that'd be fun for me, not so fun for you. Uh, last couple, Jonesy uh, has suggested running 1,600 kilometres like Ned Brockman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we are literally in this exact studio, so we'll be going around in a lot of circles. No, he's got a treadmill. Uh, last one here, Jacob in Melbourne has suggested us having some spy. Spicy sauce. He's even sent it in yeah, for I've us to this. use. This stuff is the real deal. This um, it's called Da Bomb. Uh, it says Beyond Insanity Hot Sauce. I believe this is from Hot Ones, the show. Mm-hmm. This is like the hottest. That's level sauce. ten, right? This is level ten. Um, so it says, yeah, habanero peppers blended with smoked chipotle peppers. Um, so I don't know, but it says it's lab tested at one hundred and thirty-five thousand. Scoville units, so, so I, I believe that's a bit. I believe we have to do like a shot of that, and then you have to keep saying November, November, Dude, November, I don't November. Even like sweet chili. Like, I, <laughs> I don't like, like, wh- like why? <laughs> because <laughs> we are trying to do an entertaining live also, stream. Yeah, mate, we'll eat your hot sauce, but you have to donate five bucks or something. Yeah, like, you got to donate a little bit yeah. to November. Uh, okay, let me have a little sniff. I'm not going to try it now. We'll save it for the weekend. But... Oh, that clears you yeah, out. Hey, that's that. spicy. It's probably good for your nasal God, problems. God, my ancestors are smelling that. All that right. has just gone right through me. We need suggestions to fill up our challenge board during the live stream. The best way to do that is search Ben, Liam and Bell on Instagram. Watch the story there. You can suggest challenges. Also, remember, it's on YouTube. It's when the radio show finishes, 8 p.m. this Friday night. W's in the chat for this pod. Love rap. Bill's alive. Yeah, DM us on Insta anytime you want to share anything love, sex, relationships. Tonight, 13, 24, 10, we want to find Australia's most opposite couple. We got a DM from uh, a lady called Tony. She said, hey guys, I just found out recently something horrible about my partner. The US election is on at the moment and I've just discovered that he's a Trump supporter. I am so left, it's not funny and he's never said anything until now. He's now told me that if I don't back Trump, then maybe we don't have a future together. Wow. That's awful. You would have thought the hat would have given it away. (laughs) You know? Well, apparently he's kept it secret until now, and now it's come out. It's a little bit like um, Coles and Woolies. Like, if if someone worked at Coles and then their partner worked at Woolworths, I imagine there'd be a lot of tension in that house. Yeah, or like if you worked in um, animal conservation and... um, your husband is like a poacher on the African plains. Yes. It would be super awkward over dinner, you know? Um, maybe uh, the wife is a heart surgeon and the husband um, works at a smoke mart. Yeah. <laughs> Sell on seats. Yeah. And rude toys. Yeah. <laughs> um, can we find Australia's most opposite couple tonight? 13, 20, 14. They do say opposites attract. True. You know, you're not sort of always supposed to just be the same on everything. Mm. Uh, Alice in Sydney, are you sort of opposite to your partner in a way? 
Hey guys, yeah, I am. Like, it's our jobs that are opposite. Okay. So I'm studying to become a midwife, and my husband works at a funeral home. Right. Oh. So that's your opposite ends of the scale there. Yeah. 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 You're, you're so bringing them in, <laughs> and he's shipping them out, burning them out. I was say. At least that's though with Alice, like that's not like you're going to fight over the dinner table kind of vibe. You know, mm. you can, but you're both doing things that need to be done. Yeah, he's not the bringer of death, and you're yeah. the bringer of life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not walking around with a sick, and you don't have angel wings. On. <laughs> Alice, thank you very much. That is a perfect example. We are going to give you a fifty dollar GYG voucher for dinner tonight. No worries at all. 13, 24, 10. We've got more of those to give away. We're looking for Australia's most opposite couple. Adam in Melbourne, are you and your partner really opposite? Hi, guys. Go for it, Adam. So I work in a prison facility. I lock them up and my partner um, helps them up on the outside. She gets them out. Oh, is she a lawyer? Uh, case manager. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. That is pretty obvious. So, Adam, do you, like, are there things that you can't or not allowed to talk about with your wife? Yeah, some things are, um, some uh, some things are private, like mm. protection. So we can't really talk about everything, and her life is different to mine. So she has to help prisoners get mm. out, and I keep them locked up inside. <laughs> yeah, right. And do you know if she has any uh, any people who have been in your jail before? A hundred percent, but I tell them to keep them, keep me out of it. Don't yeah. ever show me nothing. Yeah. You don't want to know. You know, is it a good crust That's working it. in the prisons, Adam? Um, I tell you what, you face challenging people, but yeah, it's definitely a good job. Yeah, okay. you, yeah. For it. you know, we face challenges every day in FM radio. You know? <laughs> it's tough gig. Yeah. Tough. Sometimes phoners don't work. People don't call up. It's really hard. <laughs> Adam, thank you very much. Nikki joins us now. We're talking about opposites. We yep. are, and my husband and I are super opposite. Not so much in our work that we do, but mm-hmm. he is anally retentive. I'm a little bit ADHD. His side of the closet is impeccable. My friend even gives people tours around our closet to show how neat he is. And then you look at my side, and it's literally like a jumble sale. And I leave crap everywhere, and he struggles with that because he is such a neat freak. Does he tidy up for you, though, Nikki? Surely he just neatens things up for you. Oh, listen, I, I, he is quite neat, but I think he, I mean, we've been married almost 20 years, but he puts up, and I want to be neat deep inside, um, but the reality is I'm just a little bit ADHD, so I put something down there, then forget about it, then go over here and do this, and so mm. he's been incredibly patient, but um, yeah, no, we are very, very opposite. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting one of those famous wardrobe tours that you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I'd yeah. love to see the anal side of things. <laughs> the 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 well organized. You know, she said he was anal. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.